Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR. And before we start today, just wanted to give a huge congratulations to Sherrit, uh, who left me a message saying they got a 168 on their GED uh, mathematical reasoning test. That's amazing. Congratulations to you. Okay, so we're going to get started today. The first question is a basic arithmetic question where they ask you to calculate the percent of change. Bob just transitioned from a part-time position to a full-time position. His weekly uh, pay has increased from $275 to $400. What percent did his income increase? So for these problems, you have to do follow three steps. And I always recommend that you follow the same system so that you, you, know, you don't get confused or whatever. The first thing would be to find the increase between the two um, numbers that you're comparing, in this case, the pay. Okay, so we would take the full-time pay, which is $400, minus the part-time pay. Okay, so that gives us an increase of $125. Step two would be to divide that increase by the original pay. So we said the pay increase was $125 and the original pay was $275. So if you divide that, that gives you 0.45. And then the final step is they are asking you in the question for a percent um, increase. So what you would do is that you would multiply your response by 100 to get it in percentage form. So it would be 0.45 times 100, that gives you 45% increase. So the correct answer would be C. Question two is an applied arithmetic problem uh, looking at a line graph. So it says, which month did shop one and shop two sell the same number of sneakers? Excuse me. So before we get started with that question, let's just quickly remind ourselves of how to read a graph. First thing, look at that that is the title it's telling you what you're seeing in the graph in this case it's telling you the comparison of sneaker sales and uh, this is your legend okay so it tells you what each of these lines represent so the blue line is going to be shop one and the green line is going to be shop two okay so basically your graph is comparing the sales of sneakers in shop one and shop two then you want to look at your y-axis, which is telling you the, the number of sneakers that were sold. And then your x-axis is telling you how many sneakers were sold from April to September. Okay, and the question is telling you at what point did shop one and shop two sell the same number of sneakers. So what you would look at is where the graphs, the lines intersect, okay, which is at May, okay, so this is the, at the point at which both shops were selling the same number of sneakers. You can see that shop one kind of ended up doing much better, right, so they started um, kind of low-key in April, but they uh, really kicked it out of the ballpark in September, whereas shop uh, two, the green line, started off well, but then they kind of went downhill as the year progressed. Okay, so the correct answer would be B. Question three is an algebra question, and it looks at how to factor a quadratic equation. So this is um, an expression that is a little bit more simple than what you usually get, but uh, you know we have to start somewhere. So let's start with factoring uh, this expression, 20x squared plus uh, 4x. So what you would do here is uh, first of all find the term that divides by both numbers. So if you take your uh, 20x squared and you divide it by 4x that gives you 5x and if you take 4x and you divide it by 4x that gives you 1. Okay so 4x is the term that divides by both numbers. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to factor out that 4x okay which we have here. And then um, you would use those two other numbers that you obtained, right, the 5x and the 1, to uh, factor out the expression. So, um, so it would end up being 4x multiplied by 5x plus 1. And the final thing would be to check your work, right? So just multiply everything across, make sure it is correct. So you would multiply that, those first two terms, 4x plus, um, multiplied by 5x, 
that gives you 2x squared, and 4x multiplied by 1 gives you 4x. Okay, so you can see that um, you factored the expression correctly. So your correct option would be D. And um, just sort of just uh, going back again, when you factor an equation, basically what you're kind of dividing it into the smallest, uh, the smaller bits um, that compose that, that expression. Okay, question four is a geometry question where they ask you to uh, find the surface area of a cone. Sam is making cone-shaped birthday uh, party hats for his 50th party. Each cone has a circumference of 14 pi centimeters and has a slant height of 5 centimeters. He will be making 40 hats. What is the total surface area in squared centimeters of half of these hats? Okay, so this might look a, a little bit intimidating, um, and uh, you will have to use one of the formulas that they give you in the formula sheet. So before we get started with this problem, let's remind ourselves of the anatomy of a cone. So when you look at a cone, it essentially consists of two parts. A body, which is that part in white, which is the curved part, and then the base, which is in blue. So if you were to calculate the surface area of a cone, you would take um, the body, the base, plus the body. So in this case, the base is equal to pi r squared, and the body is pi r multiplied by the uh, slant height, or s. Okay, so we are talking about party hats. And the thing with party hats, right? So we said the surface area equals base plus body. But the thing with party hats is that they don't have a base. Okay, so you can immediately, for this question, eliminate the base from the, your equation. So you're going to be working with this more simple equation, which simply says the surface area of this cone without a base, okay, because that's what a party hat is, is going to be pi multiplied by the radius multiplied by the, um, the slant height. All right. Um, so let's go back to our question. Um, we said that that is our formula. Uh, surface area is equal to pi r multiplied by s. And let's look at the question. Um, so in the question, they give us the circumference, which is 14 pi. Um, they give us the slant height, which is uh, 5. And then we know that pi is approximately 3.14. So with this with this information, you cannot plug it in directly into your equation. You have to do another step beforehand. And that step is to find the radius. So if you remember, um, they told us the circumference is uh, 14 pi. And if you uh, remember, uh, the circumference is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter or 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius. So that's the equation that we are going to use because um, we want to find the radius. So if you plug your numbers in, we know that uh, the circumference we said was 14 pi. And then that's going to equal 2 pi multiplied by the radius, which is what we want to find out. OK, so we just you know uh, solve for this algebra equation. So on the right side, you would want to get rid of that 2 pi. So you would divide by 2 pi on both sides. That allows you to cancel that 2 pi on the right out. OK. And then your radius is simply going to be 7 centimeters now. All right. So now you have all the information that you need. And all you do is that you're going to plug those numbers into your equation. So your surface area is going to be pi multiplied by the radius, which we said was 7, multiplied by the slant height, which was 5. That gives you 35 pi. But you haven't finished yet, because the question asks you, what is the total surface area of half of the hats? So we have uh, 40 hats in total, so half of the hats would be 20. All you have to do now is just multiply that 35 pi by 20. And that gives you 700 pi. So if you look at the answers, the correct answer would be B. 
The final question is also a geometry question, and it's a Pythagorean theorem word problem. So I've covered this in another video more extensively. I'll leave a uh, card up on the top right if you want to review that. It says, Jill travels 15 miles south and 10 miles west to get to work each morning. Find the shortest distance she can travel to get to work. So that's Jill. She's a Viking. And uh, they tell us that uh, she travels 15 miles south and then 10 miles west. And what they're asking is the shortest uh, route or distance uh, to get to work, which would be this other side. And notice that they're giving you a right angle triangle. Okay, so, so this is, as I said, it's a question that involves the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So in the question, they're already giving us the value of the two sides, the two shorter sides of the triangle, which are um, a and b. And all we have to do is find um, the other side, which is c. Um, and I've put an x on the diagram, sorry about that. Um, okay, so what you would do is just plug your numbers in like that. Okay, so 10 squared plus 15 squared is equal to c squared. That gives you um, 100 plus 225, which is equal to 325, is equal to c squared. Okay, so what you have to do now is you have to take the square root of 325. And when you do that, the answer is 18. Okay, so if we go back to the question, the correct answer would be D, which is 18 miles. And again, um, if this wasn't super clear with this question, um, make sure you check out that video that is exclusively on the Pythagorean theorem. All right, folks, well, I hope that was useful. Um, as always, uh, thank you so much for your time. Hope you have a terrific day. Stay positive and stay strong. Take care. <laughs>